I'm Chase Ambrose. Welcome to Wheels from Reels. And man, I missed a week, didn't I? Here's the thing. I am not a fan of cop dramas and I was going to do Bones. It was a viewer request and I just could not get into it, man. I, it, I struggled through three episodes and that was it. Now I'm still open to it. I mean, really the only cars I saw was a P-71 police interceptor and the Panther body, while a perfectly serviceable platform, doesn't really fit the premise of the show. I'm sure there are other cars in it. If anyone that suggested it or was excited about it, I know there were several, hit me up with an exact episode or so and I'll check it out But uh, and possibly do it, do it, but maybe not. I don't know. It, again, it's just it's not, not my thing. No, nothing against it, just not my thing. So, if you've seen the title, we're doing The Fast and the Furious, but not that one. That's right, kids. We're doing the 1954 Roger Corman film, The Fast and the Furious, not the one that's all about family, family, family. Now, if you're not familiar with Roger Corman, he is a low-budget filmmaker. He's made low-budget movies forever. He's made several car movies, and we're going to talk about three of them today. What, one that we're not going to talk about is the one that he's most well-known for, and that's Death Race 2000. The reason I'm not going to address Death Race 2000 is because, well, here's the short version. They're mostly all Volkswagens. It's mostly all Volkswagen Beetles with, with body kits on it. That's it. So it's a great it's a great movie, don't get me wrong, and maybe I will cover it at some point in the future, but for the purposes of today's video, we're going to talk about The Fast and the Furious, we're going to talk about Eat My Dust, and we're going to talk about Grand Theft Auto. So first up, The Fast and the Furious. So this film is about a man on the run charged with a murder he didn't commit. And while on the run towards Mexico, he ends up being the subject of a radio news broadcast so the heat gets on him he kidnaps a young woman named connie now connie drives a 1953 jaguar xk120 and of course the two fall in love along the way they do elude the police and they end up slipping into a cross-border car race and there's all sorts of old school race cars in this film if you are a fan of vintage race cars you should watch it just for no other reason than that i mean it is a pretty decent movie particularly for a 54 movie by roger corman but seriously i'm talking aller j2s astons oscars a jowett jupiter Maseratis, Jaguars, just the, the list goes on and on. So fast forward to the production of the film that you probably thought we were going to be talking about, The Fast and the Furious, that once again is all about family, family, family. So during pre-production, the producer sat down and was watching a documentary about Roger Corman. And during that film, he saw the title, The Fast and the Furious, for the first time. After some negotiation, Corman gave him the title in exchange for free use of some of Universal stock footage. So the Fast and the Furious franchise, while not related to the original Fast and the Furious movie, owes its title to the first Fast and the Furious movie, and there is some connection there. So Eat My Dust stars Ron Howard. It's probably best known now for being a running gag in Mystery Science Theater 3000. In the movie, Ron steals a 1968 Camaro race car and goes on a huge joyride. There are some pretty sweet stunts. 65 Cadillac Miller Meteor Ambulance makes an appearance. There are some cool Plymouth Satellite cop cars. And the whole flick is a fun ride. But I bring that film up because... Ron Howard, at the time, really wanted to direct. He had done American Graffiti, obviously Andy Griffith's show was off the air. Uh, Happy Days had just started, not to maybe a couple years beforehand, but he really wanted to get behind the director's chair and nobody would give him a chance. Roger Corman's really well known for giving people shots at doing things like directing or acting with little or no experience. So a deal was struck. Because Ron Howard still had star power attached to his name, as long as he would star in two movies of Roger Corman's, he could direct one of them. So, Eat My Dust was the first film that he starred in. The second one is Grand Theft Auto, the first film directed by Ron Howard. In this one, Ron is in love with a rich girl whose parents want her to marry another guy. The girl steals her father's 1959 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud II, and they hit the road on the way to Vegas to elope and get married. 
So the father does what any rational human would do in this situation. He goes on the radio and advertises a large reward for anyone that crashes out the Mercedes and brings his daughter back to him. So it becomes a madcap chase with everything from a 69 Porsche 911 to a 72 Chevy Love Truck involved at one point. There's also yet another Volkswagen kit car in it. We can't seem to get away from those. This one's driven by Ron Howard's brother, Clint, who we're going to talk about in an upcoming episode with a little movie known as The Wraith. Anyway, that's how Roger Corman helped inspire the title of a great film franchise and helped one of America's greatest directors get in the directing seat. So I'm not going to promise anything for what's coming up next, but uh, we'll see you next time on Wheels from Reels.